Good morning, Sunday, and I'm back in the studio. Happy Mother's Day to everybody who's out there. Um, the reason I'm back in the studio is that uh, my kids are still in bed with hulking great teenagers that they are. That's probably the best place for them on a Sunday morning, to be honest. Um, happy Sunday to you, happy Mother's Day. Um, yes, I'm back in the studio for the last of our No Show Corona Facebook Lives. Um, I'm sure plenty of you have got other things to be doing this morning. So, oh, hello, there's one, I've got one watcher so far, that's brilliant. I'm sure you've got plenty of other things to do, do this morning, so hopefully you'll be able to catch up with this a bit later on. Um, yes, today, Sunday, is all about comfort. Comfortable clothes to kind of schlep around the house. Hi, Leanne. <laughs> Thank goodness somebody's watching, that's good. Um, yeah, you just want to be comfortable, don't you, on a Sunday? And... Um, just kind of pooting around and do stuff so I'm actually probably going to have more time to do that now. Oh hi Sue, morning. A few more people are joining us, that's brilliant. Um, so I thought I'm going to chat today about comfortable clothes because let's face it I am built for comfort not speed these days and that's kind of more or less what our patterns are all about. It's everyday stuff. Hi, Lu hi Luanne. Everyday stuff that is comfortable, easy to wear, easy to make, and that you make lots of. Because once you've made it once, you're probably going to want to make it again in some way, shape or form. So I would just thought I would chat through a couple of the patterns that we've got here. Um, peas Blossom. I know <laughs> it really makes me laugh when we get people come up to us at the show and say, Oh, have you got your Peas Bottom? <laughs> you're kind of like, no, it's Peas Blossom. But to be honest... Whatever you want to call it is fine. Slouchy comfy is the way to go. It certainly is, Luanne, absolutely. Um, and what we've done with this one. Now, the nice thing about the peas is you kind of get three patterns in one. So with the um, the paper pattern that you've got, and we'll do them all as PDFs as well. We've got some news coming out about PDF patterns next week, but I'm just going to tease you about that for now. So the nice thing about peas is that it comes with three different necklines. So you've probably seen um, the different versions at the shows, or if you've been to the studio and you've seen it there. So we've got, there we go. It comes as a cowl neck version as well, which is really nice. And this works really beautifully for like a soft jersey. Um, hi, are you in your shed this morning? I hope your kids are looking after you this morning. Um, this works really nicely for like a soft drapey kind of jersey. But again, because there's no fit involved and all we're doing is looking for, um, so what we want, the qualities that we're looking for, for this pattern. Hello, Sue. Hi, how are you? I hope you're enjoying it down uh, wherever you are at the moment and your daughter's looking after you as well. Um, so yeah, we're looking for something that is drapey and has a bit of kind of, of fluidity to it really so you could make this up in um, a crepe fabric or um, something nice and light like a viscose or a rayon or something like that because what we're looking for really is the drape got the pattern at la at the last sassy on the way to oh brilliant that's good i know sassy we're gonna have to look at doing Sassy Club online or something like that. We're looking at doing Zoom things and all kinds of things at the moment. So yeah, with all of that's going on, we're kind of looking at doing business in a different kind of way. Um, we're very, very lucky and I do appreciate that a lot of people aren't in this position. Um, one of the best benefits of, of your home isolating in your sewing room, of course you are, that's the only place to be. Um, we're very lucky in that we have um, a fantastic customer base which is you guys and hopefully we'll be able to connect with you a lot more online now rather than being able to see you in face to face uh, what bus size are you at my patterns drafted for okay that's a good question actually most commercial patterns are drafted for a B cup which is really quite ours are drafted for a C 
which okay is interesting um, but because our patterns have a lot more ease and they're not that fitted even if you're a larger cut I'm a G for example I will f and I'll, you know all the patterns will work for me I don't need to do a full bust adjustment on them the only thing I might need to do an FBA on is a Kate if I don't want the gathered bit at the front so, to be honest if you have got a fuller bust our patterns will probably work and you shouldn't need to do an FBA. However, saying that, it depends on the f how you fit and uh, how you want to look at them, how you want them to look and how you want to wear them really. Um, I would always recommend doing a 12 of anything so that you've just got an idea of how it's going to look on you. That's the most important. You're gonna be able to, you want to wear them. So that's the best thing to do. Brilliant. If you want any more questions, I'm going to try and see them as I cut, as they come up and I'll try and answer them. If not, I'll go back afterwards and I'll type an answer. Okay, brilliant. So, peas blossom. This is lovely. Now, you could wear this as a pyjama top. So, if you don't want to have a, um, a kind of a proper pyjama. Now, this is Rosalind, okay. She's our kind of traditional pair of pyjamas, which I have to say I really love. They're not necessarily for wearing in bed, unless it's really cold, but they're just kind of a little bit more, um, they're a little bit smarter, if you want to go that way, for just wearing around the house. Um, and I feel, okay, I'm gonna overshare now, I'm really sorry. I feel comfortable going without a bra underneath something like this, rather than something like this, okay. But I think it depends on what you prefer to wear. So for comfort's sake, I actually really like a proper shirt because I think it just feels a bit better. It's not as clingy and it just feels a bit more comfortable. So that's entirely up to you. Um, in fact, I almost came in my pajamas today because I thought, Do you know what, it's Sunday. Um, and I've kind of compromised a bit because, actually let me just, I'm wafting this around at the moment. I'm gonna put it back on the rail. So there we go. I'm actually wearing a Rosalind top today but because I've made it in uh, just white linen um, it looks like a shirt so what's not to love about that the only thing that I've done differently to this is I've put two pockets on the front and I've hacked I've used the um, sleeve tab from our Helena dress so I've kind of lifted that used the positioning off the Helena sleeve and actually put it onto the Rosalind sleeve. So I've now got a little tab. The other thing I've done, I'm gonna turn around, turn my back on you for a sec, so you can see, I've actually put a shirt yoke and a little tab on the back there as well. Hello Toby, good morning, how are you today? I hope your mum and dad are okay. Um, hello Bill, <laughs> interested in sewing? <laughs> That's really cool. Um, so yeah, I've just hacked the pattern a little bit. Now, if you want to know how to do that, we can put that for you. We could even do a, um, a kind of a shirt version of the Rosalind top if you want to go down that route. Let me know. Um, obviously, if there's stuff that you want us to do, let us know and we can get that sorted for you because we're here to help you stay sane in your sewing rooms. When you're self-isolating or even if you just want to cut yourself off from your family, because everyone's going back home again now, um, we're here to help. So let us know what you want and we will provide it for you. <laughs> Maybe Bill, <laughs> that's good. We've got some, yeah, actually the PJs pattern that we've got here is unisex. So there you go. Maybe you could make some, uh, make some PJs. In actual fact, this is quite a good link in now to what I've got because I want to show you some fabrics that we've got that would work for both of these. Hi Linda, a video hack on the shirt would be great. Cool, we'll get that sorted. We've got so many things, honestly, I've just been brainstorming of stuff that I'm hoping that it's gonna be really helpful for you guys. And we are going to be making a proper plan for what we're going to do. So now we've got the chaos of this last week out of the way, we can start getting our heads around what we're gonna do. Hello Emma, white shirt. Uh, yeah, can't be a good white shirt. Ex Absolutely, absolutely, yes. A white linen shirt is a complete wardrobe staple, isn't it, really? Um, 
A shirt version of the Rosalind, yes, thank you. Right, okay, it's clear that people are really liking the shirt version of the Rosalind, so we will do that as a proper pattern and uh, maybe even do it as an online course as well because there are different versions that you can do. Um, right, I wanna show you some fabrics now because there are some things here that you might like. So I'm gonna bring you over to the table. Um, here we go. There, right, so now I can so show you some things. So for PJs, this has come in actually, and it's so new, it's still on the roll. We haven't even blocked it yet, which is, I love this. It's kind of slightly sort of decadent, Art Nouveau kind of thing. It's beautiful. It's a lovely soft cotton lawn and it's kind of got charcoal background with blush pink water lilies. Actually the fabric is upside down. What I should be doing is showing it to you that way up so you can see how the, there we go, how the water lilies go. So this is really lovely. It's gorgeous. It's so soft and it's so lovely and light as well. So this would be a perfect pair of kind of summer weight PJs. Really, really nice. I love that. Um, so that's available on the website as well. Don't forget, we've got free postage and packing until the end of today. Um, the other thing I want to show you is this is really nice. So this is kind of, I, I'm not a big kind of girly girly kind of thing. I prefer things that look a little bit more masculine really. Um, very William Morris Toby, it is actually. Yeah, that's a good point. Now, was he the guy who said if it's not beautiful or useful, it shouldn't be in your house or something? I can't remember something like that. Thinking off the top of my head now is not usually a good thing. But I want to show you this as well. This is really lovely. This has just come in. This is nice. It's got a tiny, there we go. It's actually got a tiny bit of blush pink in it, which I think is lovely. So I would be really happy to have a pair of PJs out of this. Um, and I think I've got somebody over there who's with me today. He's lurking in the studio. It's, uh, yeah, our child is here today. He's helping me out. And um, I think he might quite like a pair because it's got green in, which is his favorite color. Oh no, here he comes. I would love a pair of PJs in these, please, darling. Okay. Hello, everyone. Bye. <laughs> oh dear, yes, I couldn't leave him at home this morning, could I really? Um, this is 100% cotton as well. This is gorgeous. This would make up beautifully into a pair of PJs too. Or even just PJ, actually, you could have PJ bottoms in this and then have a lovely PJ top in the Peas Blossom, just in a lovely soft jersey or actually what we've got, what we've got made up here. I'm going to turn you back again so you can see it. Okay. Oh, brilliant. Leanne's putting the links in. So actually this lovely pale blue chambray would be really nice as well. So you could have a checked trousers and then a plain top, whichever way you want to go. Um, oh, look, Charlie's getting some love today. Here we go. That's called cool. back to the table, back to looking at the fabrics. There we go. So this is really nice and it's not hugely expensive as well, which is a lovely one. Um, we've also got things like elastic. We've got buttons. Um, oh no, have we got buttons online? I can't remember. We've got buttons here and they will be going on. So if you want to have anything like that as well, what we can do is package things up for you. Ah, Toby, have nothing in your house that is not useful or I believe beautiful or something like that. Exactly. Yes, I think that's a very good mantra to have, to be honest. So lovely checked. It's um, dark green and it has a bit of blue and a bit of blush pink in it, which is lovely. So that's a nice one. Um, and then if you want to be really decadent, a little bit summery, how about this beautiful rayon? It's lovely and soft. It's kind of like, you could just imagine kind of sitting out in your garden, having a lovely fresh orange juice, reading the paper, couldn't you? Or a nice coffee, couldn't you? Reading the, with wearing a pair of pyjamas in there. This is lovely. This is Marlene and she's available on the website as well. I think it's lovely actually. It's beautifully soft, drapes really nicely. You can see it's kind of got that, that sort of wobble to it as well. A pair of PJs in this would be lovely, really nice. Um, so PJs, yes. Now something that people kind of get well hung up about with pajamas is um, sewing buttonholes. That's your favorite, I know, Sharon, I know, yes. Um, so buttons and buttonholes can be a bit tricky but actually when you think about it, 
they're not. Because most modern sewing machines are going to do for you. So all you really need to worry about is where you're going to position it. And I'm going to show you that now. So I've got, I'm going to use just the reverse of this bit of denim that I've got here to do your buttonholes on. And I'm going to grab a button from my stash. There we go. So I've got a mother of pearl button, which are actually very similar to this shirt here. So when you're thinking about where you're going to position your buttons, they need to go on the centre front line. Because when you think about it, what we've got, if I bring this one forward here, there we go, let's move the camera around. So although we've got little buttons here, we've got the button stand, if you like, the button extension bit. So normally on a garment, you've got your, your centre front that kind of meets. But when we've got a button fastening, what we need to do is to have it overlap so that we've got one side for the button and one side for the buttonhole so that we can put the two together and they'll, the button will work. So where we want to overlap them is going to be that centre front line. And it's the button that's going to hold them on that centre front line. So if, we, if they're kind of too tight, too loose, you're going to change the measurement and the fit of the garment. So you want to make sure that your button is on your centre front line. So that means your buttonhole, okay, is going to have to be in the right kind of place. Now, on most shirts, the buttonholes are vertical. So that's quite nice and easy. So then it's just a question of making sure that your buttonhole is on that vertical centre front line as well. If you've got, like on here, you can see that my buttonhole goes horizontally, then that's where it becomes a little bit trickier because what you want to do is to make sure that the front edge, there we go, if I undo that, the front edge of your buttonhole here is actually on your, or just in front of your centre front line. And I'll show you why in a sec because I'm going to mark all of this up on here. So I'm going to grab my ruler and my pen there we go so I can show you what I mean so if you come down and have a little look I'm going to show you and talk to you about marking up buttonholes so let's see if we can get you to come down on here Ooh, there we go oops there we are so if I'm imagining so what I've got this fold here is going to be my centre front, my centre front line. And what I want to do is I'm going to cut it in half. So I've got a front, a left and a right. There we are. So we've got, we've got a left and a right. So my button, wherever it's gone, there we go is two centimeters in diameter. So the button's two centimeters in diameter. So you need to make sure that it's going to fit. Now on your pattern, you should have the center front line marked. If you need to mark it back in again, just refer back to the so layer pattern back over and mark it all in so that you know where everything is. So what we want to do, your button stand should be at least half the width of your button. So I'm going to draw a line on here and say that my centre front line is two centimetres. There we go. And I'm going to do the same on this one so that we've got the two matching up. There we are. So when they overlap now, and I'll do it so that, yeah, there we go. So you can see, so the lines now are sitting on top of each other. So this is what we need to happen. And this is what we need to stay put in order for the garment to kind of stay together. And it's not being made too tight and it's not being made too loose. So we need those center front lines to stay on top of each other. 
Now if I'm marking my buttonhole there, so I want my button to sit on that centre front line, so I need to make sure that my buttonhole, the end of my buttonhole comes just on that line. So it's going to go that way. Does that make sense? Can you see that? Okay. Can you see it, Charlie? Are you watching it? Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Yep. Okay. Yep. He's, yep. I'm just double checking. There we go. So when we stitch the buttonhole, we want the front edge of that buttonhole to just start just in front of that centre front line. Now the reason I'm not doing it that line is because there's a bar at the front of your buttonhole and that's going to take up a little bit of space. So what we need to do now is to make sure that we're going to position the buttonhole. Hello Lorraine, how are you? Hi Donna, how are you? Yes, you can see it, brilliant, that's good, just checking. So when we start sewing the buttonhole, we're going to make sure that the needle and the buttonhole start here. Now, different machines will work in a slightly different way. Most of the modern ones will have a fully automatic buttonhole. So I'm going to come and take you back up to see me now. There we go, so I can talk to you. So on your machine, you'll probably come with this thing. Okay, this is an automatic buttonhole foot. Now, what it does is it will calibrate for you how big to do your buttonhole. And it does that by these slider things will open up. They feel stiff, but just kind of go with it. So there we go, that opens out. Now your button will fit just in that little slot at the back there, can you see? And then we're gonna close it up so the button is held tight in that top bit. Now what that does is it opens out these little calibrating arms here. And when we put it onto the machine, you'll be able to see there'll normally be a little um, a drop down arm that will sit between these two. And what happens is as the machine's going and stitching and it will kind of come forward and the arm knocks, the little arm down coming down from the, the buttonhole bar it's called, comes down and it will knock that one and it automatically changes the stitch for you. And then as it goes back, it will change the stitch again. So that's how it all does it automatically for you. I'm gonna take you over to the machine and I'll show you how to position this and we'll get a buttonhole stitched. There we are. Right, so see if we can get this moving over come down to me and then onto the sewing machine. Now, I wonder if I can make that bigger again. Okay, I'm playing with the, playing with the zoom. There we go, right. Let's see if I can get that on the machine for you. So on your machine, let's just bring that forwards a bit. Oh. There we go. I can hold it for me. I don't mind, it's up to you. Right, so I'm gonna take off the foot. Now this is just a quick release foot. And then I'm going to clip it on. Now it has a little bar at the front here. And that's what the claw on the machine will grab onto. Now sometimes it won't fit under. Now this is a really good trick. I've got my presser lever foot up but if I push it up even more, it lifts the foot up again. So you can double lift your foot. That way you can get it in exactly the right place and it will just clip on to the buttonhole foot for you. Is that a new pattern I'm wearing? Ooh, Sarah Louise. It's actually a version of the Rosalind pajamas. Who knew that you could do that? Sorry, oh, my face went a bit big there. Um, we're going to do it as a uh, pattern hack version. So, yes, right, buttonholes. So what we want to do now, I've got my buttonhole foot on. We've got it calibrated here. So I'm going to change the settings on my machine. Now, this machine, which is a Jernomi M100 QDC, is brilliant. And these are the ones that we've got in the studio. So they're very, very easy to use. Um, it will automatically just swap it over to the buttonhole stitch and I need to drop down my buttonhole bar so you can see this bit here this is the bar so as the foot moves it get, gets nudged by the calibrating arms on the buttonhole foot and it automatically changes the stitch 
So you've just got to be a bit careful not to accidentally nudge that as you're sewing. So what I want to do is my marker here for where my buttonhole is going to start is what I need to find in the window of the foot. So all I'm going to do is line that up. Now, I know you can't see it, but you're going to have to trust me that it's in the right place, but that's fine. We will probably do um, this as more of a techniques online thing. So um, we'll show you that in more detail. It's also in my book. Right, <laughs> a shameless plug there. Um, all I'm going to do is just let this go now because the machine does it all for me. So first of all, it just does a straight stitch backwards. Then it's going to get nudged and it's going to start the forward zigzag to do one side of the buttonhole. So all your job to do is really just to keep it straight. And that's going to go backwards. And then it will change and it'll do the bar across the top. And then it'll do the forward zigzag to create the other side of the buttonhole. And now it's going to stop and it'll do the bar at the front. And then it'll do a few little securing stitches and then it beeps at you to tell you it's finished. So that's so cool. Now, I'm just going to trim that off and there you can see one beautiful buttonhole. Now what we need to do is to open that out. So this is another good trick. Now, it does help if you've got a really nice sharp unpicker. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you this here. I'm actually going to put a pin in. So it's going one side over the buttonhole and through the other side. Okay, so it's going to act as like a bar to stop me taking it all the way through. So with my unpicker, my quick unpick, I'm actually going to slide that through the end and then just using a very gentle pressure, I'm gonna slide that through, but then the pin at the end is gonna stop me shooting off through the end of the buttonhole. So there we go. Now, if that's not too, if that's not big enough, you can then turn it round and then just poke the unpicker through the other end and just release a few of the extra fibers at the end there. Okay. so. Buttonholes are not difficult, they really aren't. Hi Wendy. My loving my lives, thank you. That's cool. So buttonholes, right, I'm gonna unzoom that and bring that back up. Let's see if we can unzoom it. Uh, there's a question from uh, Wendy about the marker pen. Oh, marker pen, yes, I can see your question there. Um, the marker pen I'm using is just a water erasable pen. So it's a blue one. Um, we do them online, they're not hugely expensive and they're brilliant. So all you want to do is once you've used it to mark off whatever you need to, you just get a paintbrush, a clean paintbrush with a bit of water and it just and just rub it off and it'll just disappear. So they're really, really helpful actually. Um, yes, yeah, so but I was using yesterday, they're both exactly the same thing. So that one comes, I think one's a, a blue one and one was a, oh actually no, the one that I was using yesterday is this one. Oops, is this one. This has actually got chalk in it. I know, it's really cool. We are going to get them in, so you'll be able to buy them online as well. But these are brilliant, actually. They just do a really fine little line. So this is a chalk one, and this is a table one. Um, these are available now, and this will be. So we're gonna be getting, but obviously because we're not gonna be doing workshops, in the studio, so we're actually going to be increasing the range of products that we've got available. So haberdashery and things like that will expand. And obviously we're gonna be letting you know all about that as well. So I hope that's made buttons and buttonholes a bit clearer. So in order to now, if you're gonna stow, you, what we need to do is work out where we're gonna position the button. So I need to just get, there we go. So I need to get my button back out of my foot there we go so we've got the buttonhole is now stitched there we go there 
So we've got the buttonhole stitched and open and I'm going to overlap that so that my centre front lines are in the right place. And then I'm going to pop a pin through the actual buttonhole and make that level there. So the right reason I'm doing it just with a pin is if you've got several, you can just lay them and then just put your pin through all of them. Um, I think my kids are maybe I'd be one to one. Absolutely, Luanne, we would welcome you into the studio. We may even, actually, I'm gonna, we may even do VIPs via Zoom. We'll see. So I've, all I've done is poke the pin through the button. Now, once you, if you've got lots of them, you can just poke it through and then you can check and make sure that actually it's level with your centre front line. And that's where you're going to be able to sew your buttons on. So actually it isn't that difficult at all. Um, there we go, come back up to me and I can talk to you now. There we are. So sewing and marking buttonholes really isn't as bad as you think it is. Um, so if you're making a shirt or a dress or anything like that, then don't worry too much because actually it isn't a big deal. You could then decide really where um, you want to put your buttons because they could be a real feature. So whereas on here, there we go, we've just got individual, you might decide that you want to pair them. So if you've got three little ones, you might, two or two little ones, so you could actually make a real feature out of it. Now, VIP Zoom is the way forward now for Jules. Absolutely, I think it is. I think we're going to Zoom everything, aren't we, really? Or Skype or whatever. We need to work out what kind of platform we're going to work on. Um, so, yes. The other thing I wanted to chat to you about was uh, kind of comfy clothing. So we've been doing a little bit of that this week. Um, oh, no, before I do that, there was another tutorial that I wanted to show you, actually. And that was the um, binding. So on the peas blossom top. There we go. We do a, bind, a clean binding on the back neck version there, which is quite a nice way of, of doing it. Um, I know, Denise, I know Donna. You know, the thing's too far away for me to be able to see, so I'm gonna have to go like that. Um, Donna, yeah, I know, I, it's, a, it's something that we're thinking about. We're going to have lots of chatting next week to work out what we're going to do with the weight and how we're going to push everything forwards. Um, it would be great via Zoom, except the three kids will be cross snacks every three nanoseconds. <laughs> do you know what we could do is lock yourself in the bathroom. I used to do that with my kids sometimes. I just lock myself in the bathroom just for five minutes of peace and quiet. So yeah, maybe that would work. So a clean finish now. There is um, a tutorial on our website that shows you how to do a clean finish binding. Um, and it's quite a nice way of doing it. So if you don't want to see the binding, you know, when we were talking yesterday about the cape dress, if you didn't want to see the visible binding side, this is another way of doing it. So you could finish the neckline of the peas blossom in this way, well, or any of the dresses really. So what have we got? We've got, um, you could do it with Celia or Kate, or uh, Iris, I'm trying to think of all our patterns now, but or Peas Blossom, which is a really nice one. So again, how we were working with the um, binding yesterday, and we were talking, so I'm gonna do it on the other side. Let me just cut a length of binding off there. Now, in terms of, the width of your binding. So we've got, this is the one that I was kind of talking about yesterday, the one that I've made. Um, and an easier way of doing this, I think, if your binding's not too wide, now you could, if you, you could trim your binding down. I quite like it if I'm doing a binding, I can fold it in half and that way, it makes it really easy so I'm not having to deal with little tiny seam allowances when you're folding it over. If you fold it in half and press it so that it's just in half, it's quite a nice way of doing it. I'm going to press this quickly. There we go. So all 
I'm going to do is just, I'm just going to fold it in half and press it. There we go. So basically I've just taken that little strip and folded it in half. So what I'm going to do with it now, if you come down to the table, I'm going to do my Keith Floyd thing. If you're a certain age, you will remember Keith Floyd. There. So we've got the edge now. Yeah, I'm just going to do a straight one for now. But it would work in exactly the same way as we did the curved one yesterday. Now yesterday, we stitched the binding onto the wrong side first, folded it over, and then top stitched it. This time we're going to do it the other way around. So I'm going to line up my binding with the right side of the fabric. Now again, it's really important to make sure that you know where your stitching line is. So if you've got a centimetre and a half, then you might want to give yourself a guide and make sure that you're going to sew a centimetre and a half stitching line in which case you might want to trim that down first because what's going to happen is as we've stitched your binding down that's then going to fold over and cover up your seam allowance underneath so you might want to trim that down first it's going to get trimmed anyway so it doesn't really matter so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch that so I don't know if you can see on here there's a little bit of a crease left where I've folded the binding in half. So I've undone the kind of seam allowance flange bits and then I've folded it in half, but you've still got a crease there. So that's a good guide to use as your stitching line. So I'm gonna line that crease up with my stitching line on the fabric. So come over to the sewing machine. Uh, there we go. There we are. Um, there we go. I'm not going to zoom out this time so you can actually see me and what I'm doing because this is the boring bit. But what I'm going to do, again, I'm not going to, I'm not actually going to pin it. This is, and I think sometimes people get really hung up on pinning. And, um, oh, thank you, Sarah Louise. That's brilliant. Um, sometimes people get hung up on pinning a bit. When you think about the production processes that go into making garments, they don't pin. It just doesn't happen because each process is thought through in such a way that they're doing a little bit and they only need a glass of wine. I should, shouldn't I really? It's a bit early for me. Maybe a cup of coffee. Um, each section, each process as a whole of making up a garment is kind of worked through individually so you don't need to worry about pinning. It's a little bit different but the vast majority of what we do does work in the same kind of way. So you don't need to worry about pinning everything to within an inch of its life. Fingers act as pins as well. And that's what I'm going to do when I'm attaching the binding. So I'm going to hold the binding in place and sew a little bit. And that should work. I'm going to cough, I'm sorry. <coughs> I don't usually do this much talking. Oh, it does help. If we put the foot back on the sewing machine, doesn't it? At least... I have got a reasonable amount of thread on the bobbin, which I ran out of the other day. <laughs> oh dear, what a rookie error. There we go, I can put it back to normal sewing now. So that's fine. So what I'm gonna do is I've got my stitching line on my garment piece marked, and I'm going to lay the fold binding along that line so that I know I'm going, I'm gonna have the end of the the edge of the binding is going to be on the finished sewing line so that's what we need to do now if I was doing this with a whole garment I might not even pin either I might just lay it and stitch it So that's just stitched in place. So that would be my finished edge now, and then that's gonna get folded under. So obviously we've got too much seam allowance here, so this needs trimming. And I'm gonna cut that back so that it's going to sit. So if that's my binding, that's the width of my binding, my seam wants to be about literally a quarter of an inch. 
a scant half a centimetre. So I'm going to trim that back. Now, when we fold that back over, it's going to cover the row of all your seam allowance underneath. And that keeps it nice and clear. Now, some people like to understitch their binding, which you can absolutely do. So, understitching, uh, oh, itchy nose, I do apologise. Um, understitching, like with a lot of terminology with sewing, kind of does what it says on the tin. So, Understitching will hold it under. Now, we were talking about that the other day. I can't remember what we were talking about now, but it's one of those things that um, you find it in almost all sewing patterns and it will really help you get a really good finish. Some things like that will really help. So I'm just kind of finger pressing that at the moment. And you can see from the wrong side that the seam allowance doesn't come anywhere near the edge of your binding, so you know you're going to be okay. Now, if you wanted to understitch it, what you would do is you would sew through the binding and the seam allowance at the same time. And that just helps everything just roll under quite nicely. I'm not gonna bother to do that because I quite like just having one row of stitching on the wrong side. So what I'm gonna do now is fold that over. Now, if you were gonna do it properly, you'd press it, but I'm kind of doing telly sewing, so. How wide do I make my binding? Oh, that's a good question, Christine. Um, the binding that I've got here, I've used with, I don't know if I've got my bias binding maker here. Um, let me have a quick look. No, it's in another box somewhere. Um, again, that could be another question for another, another tutorial. The binding that I've got here, I've actually cut the bias strip so it is four centimeters wide. So that's the bias bit. So the whole width of that strip is four centimeters. And then I've put it through a two and a half centimeter or an inch bias binding maker. And that's just helped me press under those little edges there. So that's quite a nice, it's quite a, a decent sort of width suitable for lots of different things. Um, you could make narrower binding if you wanted to. Um, so it depends on how you want to do it, how whatever wide you want to cut your bias strip. But the one I've got here is four centimetres wide. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this now is just fold that over and then I'm going to top stitch it or edge stitch that bit of binding in place there. So again, I'm going to do the same that we did last time and you can use your uh, foot as a guide and then swing the needle into the right place. So I'm going to just eyeball it today. The more you do, the easier this gets. So just eyeballing stuff has, um, it's basically having the confidence to just go and do it. And as we were talking about yesterday, it's a really good idea, I think, now people have got the time and the headspace to do stuff, is to actually create your own, um, sewing techniques library so if you have a go at doing something it's um you know just doing sample pieces of it and just doing a couple of them and seeing how things work and i think a lot of the time i am really guilty of this of not being um analytical enough i do i've kind of got out of the habit of it working in production you kind of have to do it because you've got to work out the best and the most economical and the cheapest way of doing things sometimes um, and a lot of the time people, um, oh, you're going to be sad not to watch tomorrow. We will be doing more of these, um, but maybe not quite four in a row. Because it's, quite, it's actually quite hard work getting everything prepped and then talking solidly for an hour. I really need a cup of coffee at the end of it. Um, but we are going to do more, Luan, so don't worry. We will be around. Um, yeah, so I think having a go and creating your own kind of technical library so that you're understanding how the processes work on your machine. 11 o'clock sewing class. Oh, thank you. We'll, maybe we'll do more. So um, I think we'll probably do something on Tuesday. 
And what we might do is uh, something like a Techniques Tuesday or something like that. Again, totally thinking off the top of my head now, but we'll get things sorted for you so that we can stay in touch, which would be brilliant. Um, so yeah, have a go. Just play around with stuff at home and start recording what you're doing. Take pictures or things like that, and it really, really helps. So I'm gonna wing this now and we'll see how it goes. So all I'm going to do is just do it by eye. And we'll see how straight I get it. It might be a bit wiggly, who knows. Actually, this is a good trick. Sometimes the quicker you go, the easier it is. If you kind of think about uh, riding a bike, when you're learning to ride, it's harder to stay in a stri straight line the slower you're going. So um, if you go a bit quicker, it's easier to get that momentum and go straight line. So. There we go. So there we go. So that's, oh, that's not bad. Nice bit of straight stitching there. And then that's all you're gonna see from the wrong side. So it gives you a clean finish as opposed to a visible binding finish, which is a quite a nice way of doing it. So that is quite a nice way of finishing off necklines or hems even, which is another way, nice way of, of doing it too. Um, so yeah, there we go. A couple of tutorials there for you. Oops, I'm gonna bring you back up now. So there we go. Right. There we are. So that's, um, I don't know how long we've been going for now. Let me just check. Oh no, okay. So yeah, just to kind of recap what we've been doing this week, really. Um, we've had a chat about the cake dress, which is great. So you'll be able to go and watch these again too. Um, the cake dress is a lovely one. Brilliant if you're gonna start out for sewing and uh, you're not quite sure what to do. You don't wanna tackle um, zips or buttons or anything like that. It's a brilliant one to start with. Um, and we've got lots of fabrics that she works in as well. We've also spoken about um, the Paulina and some of the jersey fabrics that we've got. Now I'm just going to go through a couple of those again because um, actually having, I want to show you different types of jersey. So I'm going to bring you over to the table again. There we go. Right, so on here, let's just move some stuff out of the way. There are different kinds of jersey, different kinds of knit fabrics that will work with different kinds of patterns. So I wanted to show these to you. I'm gonna move these out of the way. So this one ooh, is lovely. Now this is a slightly heavier weight, well, I would say it was a medium weight jersey really. It's got lots of movement to it, but it's actually kind of knitted as two layers together, which is quite cool. And this is a cable knit, which is lovely. Now this would work beautifully for um, the, in a, talking about comfort today. This is lovely. It would be really comfortable and make up look beautifully in kind of looser weight um, garments. So something like the Paulina that we were talking about earlier on in the week. I'm going to find a pattern through the game. So that's Paulina. I know that FB is going to reverse this so you're weaving it backwards. Um, hi Brenda. You're going to listen on replay. I'm sure lots of people are. Guy, you know, why would you be sitting watching this on FB? Um, I may have to do a Regan in that. <laughs> yeah, I think you probably will, Sharon, yes. <laughs> um, I'm sure people have got far better things to be doing on a Sunday morning than watching me. Uh, but I hope you'll be able to catch up with us later. So this would be beautiful for Paulina, and it would also work fabulously for Julia. Um, really nice, this one. And it would work brilliantly in Regan. So Sharon, I know you've got your eyes on this, which is brilliant. So again, this is a nice kind of medium weight one. We've also got this, which is lovely. This is a linen mix jersey. And it's lovely. It's a kind of a slubby kind of texture to it, which is gorgeous. This is more kind of t-shirt weight. So this would be perfect. Actually, you could do it. You could do it in the Regan. You could actually, I've got one in the Julia, which I use as a yoga top, 
which is quite nice actually and that's lovely it might not be heavy enough for the paulina but it would definitely work um for the peas blossom there we go so you can actually see the three different necklines that you can get included in the pattern um and this one would be lovely it's quite a nice lightweight one but again it's because it's it's got linen in it it's going to be really lovely so this would be really nice um so again slightly different again but would work with several different patterns we've also got this one now we haven't really shown this very much she kind of gets forgotten but i'm thinking actually we need to get her out really this is um a jersey devore and which devore is a kind of fabric where it's made up of two different fibers and what they do is they um i don't want to undo this actually so you can see it better so people have probably come across Devore Velvet before, find lots of scarves and things like that made out of it. And basically what they do is they print a design onto the Devore in acid and it eats away at the silk pile. So you're just left with the kind of see-through fabric underneath. So you get that kind of um, dense and see-through kind of element to the pattern. And this I think is gorgeous actually. And I've been meaning to make this up for ages. I don't know if you can see it, but it is like that. There we go. You can see that sort of Devore pattern. So this would be beautiful for layering up for the summer. So if you've got like a lovely white vest or something underneath this, and then just having a Julia top in that would look gorgeous. It really would. I will be making one this summer. I've been meaning to make it for ages, but I'm actually probably going to have time to do it now. So that's lovely. Again, this is a much lighter weight jersey. So you've got three different weights of jersey fabric there. Just ideal for comfortable patterns like peas. And uh, we've got the Rosalind here. So you could actually have what works quite well is peas blossom as a top and Rosalind bottoms. Um, and then you've got Paulina. Now, actually, I'm going to... I had to bring this one back out again because it's just so gorgeous. And I have been stroking it this morning already. This is the Alpine Fleece. I could just go back to bed now, actually. This is just lovely. Um, oh, Leanne, do you like that one too? Is that the Devore that you like, Leanne? Or are you, going to be, are you being swayed by the Alpine Fleece again? Um, this is just lovely. I think it's gorgeous. It's so soft and snuggly. Um, and I will be finishing off the Paulina that I made in this on Friday so that I can be wearing that tonight. Um, this is lovely. Again, it's a slightly heavier weight, so again, it would work perfectly for Paulina and Julia, um, and definitely Regan, actually. In fact, you could do it with the other oh, Devore. Yes, I know, it's lovely, isn't it? Um, this with the fluffy side out, and then you could use the plain side for the neckband, and the cuffs would work really well, too. So I think that's lovely. So just some fabric ideas there for you. They're all available online, um, and shameless plug here, me and other small businesses are going to really be relying on your help over the next few weeks and months, um, so if you can help us, do, and you can help us by buying stuff, basically, because this is how, you know, we make a living. Um, one of the things that I'm going to be doing this afternoon, and uh, we thought that you might like to have a go at, is um, a bit of patchwork. And I'm not really, Leanne and I can show you how to make a show, Leanne, I can, yeah, there you go. Leanne needs to really be Regan, and Sharon is going to be the Regan expert now. Oh, God knows how many she's got already, and there probably will be more. Um, thank you, Donna. I do get, it's quite nice sometimes to be shown things, isn't it? Because you might not think of something, and if people can show you kind of fabric combinations and colours and stuff like that, hopefully it gives you a few more ideas as well. Um, but yeah, one of the things that I'm going to be doing today is a bit of English paper piecing. I don't know if anybody's had a go at that. I've got my stuff with me. So, I've, <laughs> this is so, I'm so skanky, isn't it? This is the bag that I keep all my bits in. I really need to get around to making myself a proper project bag, actually. Um, but English paper piecing is brilliant. It's a really lovely way. I'm going to get crinkly now, sorry. There we go. 
and I've got all my little fabric here too. So what, basically what you do, okay, you have lots of bits of paper that are cut out in shapes and you wrap, actually I'm going to bring you down a bit, there we go. So you can see on the, on the table here, there we go. So, and then you wrap the fabric over the bits of paper like that. Now, if you're being, if you're doing it properly, you should probably cut, these are the instructions. Now I cheat and I bought a load of these at the Festival of Quilts last year. They were already cut out. So the instructions on here will tell you to cut your, um, cut your paper pieces out and then you cut your fabric about half a centimetre bigger or about three eighths of an inch and a centimetre. And then, but I cheat because what I do is I cut squares. And then I kind of put the put the cardboard or the paper inside the square, and then just fold it over, and stitch it as I go around. And it's brilliant. Um, I'm going to do a video for how to do this because I'm absolutely addicted now. I've created this one already. So this is one that I was working on, and so there we go. So you can see that's what I've been doing with all my EPP pieces. Um, I've just done them in lines, but you can do them in any pattern you like, really. Um, and it was Claire, some of you know Claire, who does teaching here. Um, she kind of got me into it and I thought, oh, I really like that. She did one and I thought, oh, I'm gonna have a go. And I've just got hooked now. And it's lovely because it's the kind of thing that you can just do in front of the TV. So what we thought we would do is um, create some templates for you. So what you can do is print these off so we've got two shapes. We've got the hexes. There we go, that's better. Hexes and diamonds. And we've got half square triangles. So these are available as free PDF downloads. So you can print those off. You'll find them in the craft kits section of our website. So go to the top bit. Love patchwork. I know, oh, baby quilt. I know, that's so cute, isn't it? I wish I'd have been doing this when my kids were little, actually, because um, I would love to have made them something like this. Um, so, yeah, go to our website. Um, I think Leanne's going to put the link in there for you. Otherwise, you can find it under Craft Kits or search on the website EPP and you'll be able to find them there. And um, we're also going to put together for you some um, fat quarter bundles. So we're going to put together some fabrics that work so that you don't have to wor worry about thinking about which one's going to work, go with this and which one's going to go with that. So we're going to put some together for you so that you've got colours that you know are going to blend and look really, really nice. So those will be up on the website later. I've just got to photograph them. Um, and that, I think, is a really lovely idea. In fact, the other thing that I kind of came across the other day... Oh, there we go. Leanne's put them up for you. That's brilliant. Um, I'm going to try and shout out a couple of people that I found really interesting and I think you will too. A couple of weeks ago I had some time out for myself and I went to something called um, the Glow Festival at a place called Forest in Pembrokeshire and it was amazing. It was a weekend of women creatively spending time together and it was fabulous and I met a lovely lady there called Lizzie Everard and she brought some of her patchwork with her as well. And um, she's called Betty Sews Silk on Instagram and she's doing some stuff there. She's an animator and she's really lovely. And she also does singing. And we were all singing out in the woods and it was just the most magical thing. Me. I mean, the only time I sing is um, in the car. And then I sing really loudly because no one else listens. But actually, uh, so I don't know if you've seen any of the Facebook uh, posts about Italians singing out in their off their balconies and stuff and there was Charlie showed me one today where um, there was the Spanish police because everyone's in lockdown over there it's coming people let's face it um, so there was a really brilliant little video where um, two police cars drove up this street stopped and they just jumped out and started singing and playing guitar how cool is that there are some really lovely lovely things going on at the moment and it just kind of restores your humanity doesn't it really so have a go at this and do follow Lizzie. She's brilliant actually. And um, that's it. When she, she the, um, the paper piecing that she brought with her, she had cut the paper out of local newspapers for wherever she was. And I thought, what a genius idea. So she got bits, really interesting bits of newspaper 
backing her quilt and I thought no idea um, the other person that I think you might find interesting is a lady called Amanda Bannum and she's called Amanda Bannum Ceramics on Instagram and her uh, blog is at theclayclub.com and she's hysterical she's really funny she makes the most amazing little clay houses and then writes stories about the imaginary people that would live in them I love it it's just really brilliant so if you're looking for something to read on a Sunday have a look at her blog the other thing that I really want to um, let you know about is five good things which is the email that the beardy man over there at Charlie Bud at the tour photographer, he writes a little email that goes out every Sunday morning um, called Five Good Things. Oh, there we go, Charlie's put the link into the Spanish policeman, which I think is brilliant. <laughs> um, so if you want something good to read, have a read of his Five Good Things. He posts out every Sunday morning and it's five really lovely things that have happened that he's discovered and found on the internet or in real life. And it's just a nice little thing to keep you going on a Sunday morning. So check out Amanda Bannum, check out uh, Betty Sews Silk uh, on Instagram and uh, sign up for Charlie's newsletter, which is five good things. And we'll be back, we will be back. So clearly um, people have enjoyed this, but there we go. Um, and uh, see you back here very soon. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. The sun is out, spring is, springing and uh in look after your mums because they will be looking after you stay safe and stay healthy and we'll see you soon take care guys